Hi, my name's Polly. I'm an artist and I'm doing this video workshop to celebrate Ulster Scots Week. I'm actually Scottish. I might not sound like it, but I came over here many, many years ago, just after I left school. I was quite young when I came over and the accent sounded very different to me. So I think I just wanted to learn the lingo, be understood and understand those around me, which is why I don't sound so Scottish now. Like myself, many, many years ago, a lot of Scottish people moved over to Ulster and when they came, they brought with them their culture, their traditions and their language. Unlike me, they didn't lose those things because initially they kept within their quite tight communities that they'd come over from Scotland. Gradually over time, they began to mix with the locals, which is now where we have Ulster Scots and the Ulster Scots language. So we're going to be looking at a few different words today and doing some creative activities around those words. Some of the words we're going to be looking at today. Trousers, also known as trousers or breeks. Jersey, Gansey, football, fitba, autumn, herst, year, 12 months, irritable, crabbit, infect, smit, infested, hochin, annoyed, fashed, as in, I might say to you, didn't fash yourself? Don't be worrying, don't be getting yourself annoyed. And if I wanted you to keep quiet, I'd say, how you wished. And if I was telling you to tuck your shirt in, I might say, sark instead of shirt. And ears, lugs. And if I want you to listen, I'll say, pin back your lugs. So we're going to be looking at some of those words today. Okay. So for our first printmaking activity, we're going to start off with something pretty simple. Um, what I have here um, is a piece of acetate, sort of sturdier acetate that um, you might find in a picture frame. And we are going to do what is called a monoprint. So I've applied some ready mix paint um, to this. If you have access to inks um, and a roller, um, then you can roll on inks and get a smoother surface. Um, I have painted this on with a brush and it's reasonably thick paint. Um, it's sort of gloopy, it's not too runny. Um, and yes, I've kind of got the brush marks and things on it, but I'm okay with that. As I say, if you've got um, access to a roller, you can roll it out and get a lovely smooth surface. It's called a mono print because you get one print each time, mono one. So what I'm going to do here is draw a little design um, onto this. So I'll catch up with you in a few minutes. So what I've drawn here is a very simple Christmas jumper design. So a Christmas Gansey. You could try drawing um, football Gansies, Christmas Gansies, whatever you fancy. Um, I've used the blunt end of a skewer, a wooden skewer, but any kind of tool that you can make a nice mark in that without scratching the plate. So something sort of blunt. Uh, you can change your colours up, obviously, um, and because it's a mono print, you don't like what you get, try draw something else the next time. So I'm going to get some paper and get ready to print this. So I have my piece of paper now, and I'm just going to drop that down on top of my plate, and I'm just going to lightly, very lightly, press that on to make sure that it's making contact with the page. I don't want to be rubbing too hard because what I'll do is smear and press that ink down so that the design will become all smeared as well. So you could do a whole outfit on here. You could do your trousers, your breeks as well on this. And here we go. Okay, not too bad for a first effort at a Christmas jumper. I think maybe if I went a little larger, I might be able to put a little bit more detail on it. So there's my Christmas Gansey. Now, a word of warning if you're considering um, putting a number on a football Gansey that you might be designing. Um, when you're printmaking, what you put onto the plate is like that. But when you lay the piece of paper on top, you get that. So if you have a number 25 here, it's going to come out as a back to front 25 here. So the next printmaking um, activity that I'm going to do, I'm going to show you, uh, will actually show you a couple of ways of getting around that. 
Some of you could be very clever and good at mirror writing. Uh, it's that kind of skill that's required, but there are a few cheats. What I have here uh, are some lovely choice phrases from the year that has been 2020, uh, such as our COVID-19 and people were getting smit all over the show and there were people arguing on Zoom and saying how your wish, pin back your lugs and it has been the longest 12 month ever. People were getting plenty fashed and plenty crabbit and lockdown was just hoaching with COVID-19 talk. So just obviously to do this one, we turn the tracing paper the other way so that we're getting the reverse and we just draw through the tracing paper and you can see I've already used this piece and you can see how much it's broken through. The tracing paper is quite brittle so it will break through and just continue on like that. I've done a little bit of this just to show you. Um, I'll continue on with this and come back to it. I've actually just spotted a little bit there that I've missed which is grand. You can go in and do that. Um, I'm going to show you a couple of ways of doing uh, these types of plate. So that was just piercing directly through the um, polystyrene with my pencil. There we go. Happy enough with that. So really I've just kind of concentrated on the 2020 bit just now. So I'm just going to roll some ink on here. This is water-based paint. Acrylic paint dries up fairly quickly, um, but maybe something like a, another water-based paint, uh, like a ready mix or whatever, if you don't have access to ink. As I said before, whatever you can find to roll that on with or sponge it on if you don't have um, access to a roller. So you maybe see from that 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 is a little bit more crooked possibly than the original writing. That's because when you're doing it, um, you pierce through, it can be a little bit uneven. So if I had a clean roller, I could roll over the top of this with the clean roller. But fingers or the back of a spoon or every bit is good to get the print. So there we go. And we've got our 2020 round the right way. So I've drawn this with a sharpie on a sort of normal piece of paper. And this time I'm going to be able to turn round and see what I'm doing um, to transfer this to my plate. I can turn it over and place it on top of my plate. But even if I draw through now, it's not going to transfer to the polystyrene. So what I'm going to do, very old trick. Uh, incidentally, if you happen to have access to it, um, you could easily use a piece of um, carbon paper or Chinese paper as one of my students calls it because that's the only place she ever sees it is in the Chinese takeaway on the little notebook that they take your order on. You'll see there is a little piece of carbon paper and carbon paper allows for something that's written on one page to be transferred to a page underneath. And we're kind of creating our own carbon paper here by putting the pencil on where we've got our writing. So I'm just getting ready to lift this off. Printed exactly the same way, smoothing over the back. I, I think there's going to be a little issue around here because there was a sort of lump, a sort of wee dried bit of the ink had gotten in. But it's grand if it's there and it's an issue. What I'll do is just ink up and go again. Yeah. I can see exactly where that spot is but reasonably clear and you can see that that's much neater than the previous print where we had gone through the tracing paper so yeah just next time inking up I need to clean the plate and just sort that little bit out there and I see that the center is missing from my P so the beauty is you can just keep you know give another go here and see how we get on the next time thank you very much for joining me for this session today and I hope to maybe see you again.